One of the ones that came through early on, uh, Peter and Paul, and, and I think they're sort of um, linked, is uh, people who've been newly diagnosed or are concerned about developing type 2 diabetes. Uh, one question, what blood tests are required to identify the amount of insulin you're producing? And a sort of uh, a linked one, which is what other blood test results should I be looking at with my HbA1c from Deb? Um, perhaps, Paul, I'll, I'll pass over to you. So in terms of HbA1c, so well, well, I guess uh, what blood tests are good to diagnose diabetes and insulin resistance, there is something called the craft test, which we shouldn't talk too long about. But basically, this looks at the relationship between the glucose level in your blood and the insulin level in the blood, because you'll recall earlier, insulin resistance is associated with high insulin levels. So it's always good to ask for comparison blood tests of glucose and insulin done at the same time. At the very least, that can be done fasting, um, but sometimes some doctors might even do it with what we call a glucose tolerance test. So the kind of blood tests that we have when you, you say you're pregnant or and looking for gestational diabetes or indeed to try and confirm the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. So rather than just relying on glucose, we run an insulin at the same time. Um, with regards to HbA1c, I mean, there's an enormous variety of, of blood tests that we can actually have a look at. Um, the, at the end of the day, HbA1c is probably the easiest and the best. Um, there's other disease, things like C-reactive protein, what we call inflammatory markers. We know that it associates quite highly with uh, liver problems and cardiac disease, so on and so forth. One thing which I think is underdone is called alanine transferase. We abbreviate this as ALT. And this is a marker of liver disease. And liver disease and diabetes go hand in hand. They're really good bedfellows. What actually happens is this chemical is inside the cells of the liver. And if the liver's really sick, those cells can burst open and this chemical can leak out into your blood. And when we detect this chemical in high levels in the blood, then it tells us there's a problem with the liver. It doesn't tell us the cause of the problem. And a lot of doctors will automatically say, oh, you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or they'll make these uh, assumptions about the cause of it. But at the end of the day, even if we don't know the exact cause, we know that liver disease is strongly associated with insulin resistance. So the most common one that's overlooked that's important, I believe, is ALT. Now... Um, in terms of how often should we do the HbA1c blood test, which I, I see some people have actually asked as well, it, you don't have to do it overly often. So it's generally recommended for a diabetic to do it about every three months. Um, just remember, while we often say it represents the average blood sugar from the last 90 or 120 days, in reality, it's most influenced by the last four to six weeks. So even if you've fallen off the rails and you're about to have another HbA1c done in the next month, it's never too late to jump back on the wagon.